Oh, oh, oh. About the prophecies, you know. Second Ezra 6 and uh, 30. And these words said he unto me, I am come to shew thee the time of the night to come. So, yeah. basically telling you everything, everything has, has come to pass. You know? Exactly. Everything's, everything's going to come to pass. You know, the ends and outs, what exists, what it doesn't exist. What's, he What's the truth? What was it? What is in the truth? Oh, yeah. Uh, actually, what I wanted to get into is, uh, basically, who's bringing the fire? Like, get into the chariots? I'm gonna get into the chariots. We gotta kinda go to the back. I'm trying to hold it. But, like, the brother was getting into, you know, that's how the destruction is gonna come. From, from, uh, the Heavenly Father. All right, it's gonna come by a uh, nuclear uh, uh, destruction. All right. Right. So, so Yahweh Shai, when he returns, he's coming to bring what? Judgment. And and, and like Matthew says, he's coming to separate the goats uh, 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 from the sheep. And the sheep represent those that were doing the will of the heavenly Father. Okay, or the elect. The, the goats represent uh, Esau, the other nations, and, and two thirds, man. That's because there's no use for them. All right? When it comes down to it, there's no use. Especially for the other nations. Two thirds, they're going to receive the kingdom, but they're going to have to receive it through uh, uh, death, man. All right? So, basically, what I want to get into is everybody believes that, well, if there's, uh, if we ever are, if America's ever under attack, it might be, uh, what, an alien invasion, they call it, or UFOs. And that, that's becoming more and more popular now. All right? And acceptable, so we're just gonna go into it. You know, we're gonna we're gonna touch on it. Spirit allowing, basically, that the chariots or, 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 or what this society would call UFOs and aliens, really, that's a cover up for what they really are, which is the angels of the heavenly Father, right? The angels uh, uh, are gonna come. Yahweh Shai is gonna head the angels and, and, and bring that destruction and deliverance for the elect. So I just want to get into that. You know, so Zach Zechariah 5 and 1. So then I turned and lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, a flying robe. Huh, so this is uh, the prophet Zechariah. And he said he, he said he looked up and behold a flying robe. That flying robe is what? A chariot or an angel. That's what he was seeing. He was seeing a chariot in the air. Alright? And he compared it to a flying robe. Okay? So this object had some sort of form and shape. You know? And the way Esau would depict it is basically like a circular disc with a bunch of uh, uh, lights and everything on it, right? That's not no alien, that's a chariot of the heavenly father. Man. He said unto me, what seest thou? I answered, huh. I see a flying robe. Yeah, so he said, he basically used a terminology to, under, to, to, to break down what he saw, all right? The length thereof is 20 cubits, and the breadth thereof is 10 cubits. All right, which is a measurement. Then said he unto me, This is the curse that goeth forth over the face of the whole earth. For everyone that stealeth shall be cut off, as on this side, according to it. And everyone that sweareth shall be cut off, as on that side, according to it. Cunt. Now, here's the thing. The Lord always bring, talks about how he's going to bring the plagues. Bring the plagues. All right? Which we can get into that too, because that's what the angels are going to do. Also bring them plagues, which is the main plague is fire, but it mentioned the curse. Now, when you actually look at the word curse in the etymology, it goes back to the word curse. I believe the word is, is plaga, which actually goes back to the word curse. But it said that this is the curse that go forth over the face of the earth. Why? Because they're going to bring the nuclear missiles. All right? That flat, same flying roll that Zechariah saw is an example of what we're going to see uh, right before we, we were beamed up into the chariots and receive our salvation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is that Zechariah 6? It said everyone that's stealing, okay? So that, that's, that, that represents who? Esau. Because Esau stole everything he got and uses his military might to do it. That's why also we didn't get to hit the scripture, but the Lord said that he was going to make America small amongst the heathen. He's going to put the spirit on these other nations to turn against America and send their fire 
but that's going to be on the will and command of Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shot. And at the same time, the angels are going to come and send their fire, all right, upon America, upon these other nations, while at the same time delivering the elect. All right. So in Zechariah 6 and 1, this told you that the, uh, the flying roll, the chariots, the actual uh, angels. Uh, Zechariah 6 and 1 says, And I lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, there came four chariots from between two mountains, and the mountains were mountains of brass. And you know no mountains not made out of brass. Con. Mountains are a gigantic chariot. Con. Like, and we can get into uh, Second Ezra, what's it, 13? Where he says about how he saw a mountain, basically. Okay. So, so to back that brother up, we can get into that scripture, right? Go ahead, read. It says, uh, and the first chariot was red, and the second chariot black, and the third chariot white, and the fourth chariot bristled, and bay horses. Then I answered and said unto the angel that talked with me, What are these? And the angel answered and said unto me, These are the four spirits of the heavens. These are the four spirits, the four angels in the heavens. Which goeth forth from standing before the Lord of all the earth. Mm. So those are the chariots of the heavenly father. There's, there's, there's a lot of times where you can look into the sky and see what appear, appears to be uh, uh, stars and they change different colors. Red, green, some are uh, like a gold, like almost like a... I don't want to say gold, but like a fireish color, like a red, you know? Yeah, you said it, yeah, it red and blue. Huh? Exactly. So, you know? Yeah, so those are some characteristics of the chariots, man. So, Isaiah 31 and 5. So once you understand what, what the chariots are, what the, and what the clouds are, what that flying roll is, then we can explain to you what they're coming to do. Which the two, two main things it, it is deliver the elect and destroy the wicked, whether it be the two thirds and the other nations. Isaiah 31 and 5. As birds flying, so will the Lord of hosts defend Jerusalem. Yeah, read that again. At the, Isaiah 31 and 5. As birds flying, so will the Lord of hosts defend Jerusalem. Yeah, so will the Lord of hosts. That's now. It says, as birds flying. So one of the, we read to you in, uh, what was you, what did you just read, Ezekiel, right? Uh, or, Zechariah, or Zechariah 6, Zechariah. excuse me, Zechariah 6 read to you them characteristics. Now, another characteristic, all right, is that they had the ability to fly, all right? That don't mean that the, the angels got bird wings coming out their back, all right? It just means that they had the ability to fly, like birds have the ability to fly. The chariots are swift. All right, and it says as as what as birds flying what as birds flying so will the Lord of hosts so will the Lord okay Yahweh Shai uh, and then it says of hosts which are the uh, other angels go ahead defend Jerusalem defend Jerusalem defend what defend the elect defend Israel defending also he will deliver it mm. get beamed up Con. yeah. And passing over, he will preserve it. Yep. It's uh, Exodus 19 and 16. And it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud upon the mount and the voice of the trumpet exceedingly loud. Mm. So that's chariot. Huh? And, and we're going to get into what the clouds are, right? And all the people that was in the camp trembled. Mm. Tremble. Why? Because that was an angel, man. And the angels of the Most High are fierce, all right? They're not a force to be reckoned with. Somebody get me a. Psalms 104 and 3. Yep. The Psalms 104 and 3. Who ate the beams of his chambers in the waters? Who maketh the clouds his chariots? Who walketh upon the wings of the wind? Read it again. Uh, Psalms 104 and 3. Who laid the beams of his chambers in the waters? Who maketh the clouds his chariots? Yeah, who maketh the clouds? All right, which is another buzzword, all right, for the chariots. All right? Oh, I got it. And also, they use the clouds as like a cloak, all right? 
even though they have the ability to appear, reappear, disappear, and all that. All right, uh, come big or, or 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 very small. And and, and who does that? Y'all about Shimia was shot. It's a little um, off topic, but well, I mean, I'm one. I said it earlier about how um, uh, the whole world is going to be destroyed, which the whole world ain't going to be fully destroyed. Okay, and this is. It says, who laid the foundations of the earth that it should not be removed forever? And the earth itself is not going to be removed forever. Okay. Just the rulership, all right? He saw, he saw it was going to be taken completely out of power. You said you just read something about the beams? Yeah, it's uh, Psalms 104 and 3. It says, who laid the beams of his chambers from the water? It says, uh, Psalms 104 and 3. Who laid the beam? of his chambers in the waters, who maketh the clouds his chariots, who walketh upon the wings of the wind. It's uh, Exodus 19, and uh, it's like it. Exodus 24 and 15. And Moses went up into the mount, and the cloud covered the mount. And the glory of the Lord abode upon Mount Sinai, and a cloud covered it six days. And the seventh day he called unto Moses out of the midst of the cloud. And the sight of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire on top of the mount in the eyes of the children of Israel. That's, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. That links right up with uh, Zechariah the 13th chapter. Okay? Where it talks about when he spoke, he spoke with fire, roughly paraphrasing. Alright? So we're gonna get we're gonna get into that. Alright, uh re 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 read that. Read it. Uh, yeah. uh, Exodus 24 and 15. And Moses went up into the mount. And a cloud covered the mount. And a cloud covered the mount. All right. Uh, what, what was the chariot doing? Hovering over the mount. Yeah, niggas that really think a, a cloud covered the mount. I mean, an actual cloud covered the mount. Covered the mount. It, it, that would be insignificant, man. Right? You know. But it, it was, was so thick that you couldn't see it. Couldn't see it. You know. If you get close to to a cloud, you can start to see. As you get close to it, you can start to see it. You know. Huh. But this cloud covered it, so it was no no you couldn't see inside of it. Uh, Exodus 24 and 15 and Moses went up into the mount and a cloud covered the mount and the glory of the Lord abode upon Mount Sinai mm. and the cloud covered it six days right so the chariot abode there for what six days now what cloud do you know just hovers in one spot all the time all right exactly the clouds are always moving so this obviously wasn't a, just a regular regular or ordinary cloud and we read that to you already in Psalms all right who maketh his clouds a cherry. All right? So that cloud is just basically a, a, a cover word or buzzword for a cherry. It's, it's, it's that simple. It's not difficult. All right? Uh, Exodus 24 and 16. And the glory of the Lord abode upon Mount Sinai. And the cloud covered it six days. And on the seventh day, he called unto Moses out of the midst of the cloud. And the sight of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire. Mm, like a devouring fire. On top of Mount Sinai. Mm. In the eyes of the children of Israel. And Moses went into the midst of the cloud and get him up upon the mount. And Moses was in the mount 40 days and 40 nights. This is uh, Isaiah 6 and 2. Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With twain he covered his feet. With twain he covered his uh, face. And with twain he did fly. Huh, that's another chariot scripture. Read that again. So Isaiah 6 and 2. Above it, it says, above, the, above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face. And with Twain he covered his feet, and with Twain he did fly. Huh. And that word Twain is two, alright? I say and with <laughs> read that last part, and he did what? And he did fly. Read up a little, little bit.